to ask the Chancellor of the Exchequer if he will make a statement on the UK economy entering recession. Minister. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Speaker. High inflation remains the biggest barrier to growth, which is why halving it is still our top priority. Thanks to decisive action supported by the government, inflation has fallen from over 11% to 4%. The Bank of England is forecasting it will fall to around 2% by early summer in only a matter of months, much faster than previously thought. Now, it's important, Mr Speaker, to put this all in context. Just over a year ago, the Bank of England was forecasting the longest recession in a hundred years. That has not happened, Mr Speaker, and the British economy has proved resilient in the face of unprecedented shocks. Forecasters, including the Bank of England and the IMF, agree that growth will strengthen over the next few years, with the IMF forecasting that we will grow faster than Japan, Germany, France and Italy, many others, on average over the next five years. Wages have been higher than inflation for six months in a row. Unemployment remains very low, Mr Speaker. And we are backing British business by delivering the biggest business tax cut in modern British history and rewarding work by cutting taxes for working people. These are all reasons to be positive about the economy turning a corner. If we stick to our plan, we can be confident in seeing pressures reduced for families and in achieving healthy economic growth. At the autumn statement, we unveiled 110 growth measures, including unlocking £20 billion of business investment. This includes a substantial labour market package, delivering a tax cut to national insurance for 27 million people, reforming pensions, extending investment zones as well. The real risk to conclude, Mr Speaker, to economic growth and prosperity in this country is the fact that the Labour Party has no plan for growth, no plan at all. Whilst they may pretend to us here that they have abandoned their £28 billion pledge, they are still committed to their damaging 2030 energy policy, which they themselves, indeed the Leader of the Opposition himself, has said costs £28 billion. All of us across this House know what that means – higher taxes and lower growth with Labour. Chelsea Exchequer, Rachel Reeves. Yeah. Mr Speaker, the Chancellor should be here in Parliament explaining why Britain has fallen into recession. Can the Minister explain why he has been left to answer these questions and where exactly is the Chancellor today? The Chancellor should be accountable to MPs and to our constituents and answer for his failure in this House. What an insult to all those people who go to work every day and experience the reality of 14 years of Conservative economic failure that he has simply failed to turn up. So let me ask the Minister, does he accept that the Prime Minister's promise to grow the economy is now in tatters? Will the Minister explain why the economy is now smaller than when the current Prime Minister entered 10 Downing Street? Does the Minister accept the misery that this Government has caused homeowners with their kamikaze budget, leaving a typical family renewing their mortgage, paying an additional £240 every single month? Now, the Chief Secretary is also notable for her absence today, last seen refusing or simply failing to recognise that their target measure of debt as a share of GDP is rising, not falling. Following her rebuke this morning from the UK Chair of the Statistics Authority about misleading the public, could the Minister inform the House if the Chief Secretary will again be relying on incompetence as her best defence? Mr Speaker, it's not good enough. The whole country knows that the economy is not working for working people under the Conservatives. It is time for change. And if the Government seriously thinks that everything is fine, then why don't they take their record of failure and let the British people decide? Thank you, Mr Speaker. And, uh, I, I, I thank the, the Shadow Chancellor for her questions. But, but no, it's right. I, I'm, I'm coming on to it. I'm coming on to it. Now, the, the, where she started was to 
uh, talk about the Chancellor. Well, I am the Economic Secretary. I am perfectly entitled to answer on behalf of the Department, and, uh, and I will do so today. But, she, but the main, the main uh, thrust of her remarks was, uh, was on growth, and let me uh, deal with those in detail. The first point to recognise, Mr Speaker, is indeed the international context that we all find ourselves in. Well, it, it, well, it happens to be true, Mr Speaker. And, for example, to describe that international context, 10 EU countries were in recession in 2023. In relation to uh, forecasts, the OBR forecasts originally that the, there would be a contraction of 1.5% in the economy, uh, and we have significantly outperformed that. The Bank of England, as I have already said, forecast the longest recession in 100 years. We have significantly outperformed that. And wages for six months in a row, I think this is the sixth month where this would be the case, have, are higher than inflation, which, as I've already said, we have more than halved. Now, in relation to the Chief Secretary, what the Chief Secretary was explaining is that well, what the Chief Secretary was explaining is that we were and continue to meet our fiscal rule, which is that debt will be falling in the fifth year of the forecast, excluding the Bank of England. And that is what she's explained, and that's what she and that's what I am reiterating for the House. Now, um, and just to finish off, Mr. Speaker, because they don't like they don't like hearing this, but they have got absolutely no plan on the economy. We have been clear about our plan, and the plan is starting to bear fruit with wages, with cutting with cutting taxes for working people starting in January with higher business investment as a result of our full expensing put in the autumn statement, and he doesn't have to take it from me. Mr. Speaker, the Office for Budget Responsibility said the two fiscal events in 2023, both the budget and the autumn statement, would represent the largest increase to the GDP level that they have ever scored. So what I would say to her, and indeed the House, our plan is working, stick with the plan, don't throw it away with the opposite. 